talking about is predictability. Predictability is a word that we don't talk about in business formally, but we should. Predictability will make sure that we stay away from the feast or famine cycle, because this happens to every entrepreneur. It doesn't matter if you have a huge business or if you're a solopreneur doing something at home or you've got you know, a small setup online, it doesn't matter. You've got these feast or famine cycles where you've got these feast or famine cycles where you will make a big sale or a series of sales and things will be great and you'll feel awesome. And if you're feasting for the month until the next month rolls around and there's no sales or there's limited sales and then you go through a quote unquote famine for your business. And how do we get around that? It's to focus on predictability. If you have a predictable business, if you know month after month you're gonna make a certain amount of money, it's only gonna bring you security and peace of mind. So you can focus on all the other things in the business. And if you can do it once, this is when I explain this to people, I usually hear, you know, but I don't know how to make that many sales. And the truth is, if you were able to make that initial sale, you can do it a thousand times, you can do it ten thousand times, you can do it a million times. It just depends on the target demographic and how you're framing that message. So focus on the target demographic, focus on how you're framing your message and make the sale. Uh, a nice way to look at it is to think of subscription. What's an example of a subscription-based business? Magazines. What's, what's another example? Cell phones. Yep, cell phones. Well, the data plan for a cell phone. What's another one? Some e-networks is a subscription-based business. So my, what, what I wanna ask you guys to do is to think about whatever business you're in, if you can add an element of subscription. Because this changed the way I was able to do business. What I was doing was pounding the pavement, going around, knocking on doors, businesses, trying to meet clients, trying to close clients, and that became a very tiresome process. If you wanted to make X amount of dollars at the end of every month, you had to keep doing that with new clients every single month. And that's a very tiresome process. But if you create relationships with people and you bring them in in a subscription-based business, you know they'll stay with you for a month, two months, three months. If you really take care of them, they might stay with you for 12 months, for 24 months. And that's a relationship you build one time. That's somebody you dealt with one time and they'll pay you month after month. So think about how you can add that to your business. Personally for me, when I was going around, I was selling these $300 and $500 packages. And I realized people were ringing me after the month was over, saying, hey, can you do this thing for us again? Or hey, can you run another campaign? And that's when I got the idea, excuse me, that's when I got the idea that I was just gonna charge for this on a monthly basis. And since I've done that, it's changed the way we approach business and it's changed the way we make money. It's all about closing the sale that first time. All right? And, and automation. If you can automate that process, even better. If you could use Facebook ads, if you could use Google AdWords, if you could you know, uh, have a sales team that's constantly calling up uh, prospects, if you can automate that process so with your hands off, then even, even better. All right, so, so the second rocket is to perfect the shot. Now, if we go hunting, what's the one thing that matters? If anyone goes hunting, what's the one thing that matters? Going home with the kill, right? Going home with the game. If you went fishing and you came back with no fish, it's not that cool, right? So what you want to do is perfect the shot. And when I say perfect the shot, what I'm talking about is the sale. You've got to make the sale because the sale is all that matters. A lot of us, and I've been very guilty of this, a lot of us get caught up with all the other things in the business because it keeps us busy. But sometimes we can be a cat chasing its own tail, running in circles, taking lots of activity, feeling really busy, but never actually getting anywhere. And that's a problem. So how do we get around that? You focus on the sale. Focus on making as many sales as possible. As the entrepreneur, as the person who is running the business, you understand your product, you understand your service more than anyone else. You're the one that can make the sale. And if you can make the sale, guess what happens? You have cash flow. And if you have cash flow, guess what happens? You can hire people. And the quicker you can hire people, the better it is for you because you get to hand off and delegate most of the responsibilities so that you free up time to do other things in your business. So focus on the, on, on the sale. 
And you can hit a million dollars, you can hit you know, multi-million dollar businesses by just focusing on one thing and doing it really good. Think about all the stories we see in magazines where somebody created a recipe for a really cool burger and all they did was perfect that burger really well so that everybody would talk about it. The burger itself did the marketing for itself because it tasted so good. That person just had to do it. He sold it for $5. To get to a million dollars, how many sales did he have to make? Any, any uh, mathematicians? Mathematicians? No. Okay, I don't know myself. All right, so how do, you, how do you make the sale? How do you make the sale? You have to prospect every day. And as business people who are really busy, as entrepreneurs who are really busy, we usually put that at the bottom of the list. We've got all this administrative stuff to do that we're not focusing on prospecting. Who are we going after to get the sale? It's really important that you focus on that. For me, a little tip that I use is to use the telephone directory, both here locally and both internationally. If you use the telephone directory, you'll see which businesses have money, have budgets to put ads in the telephone directory. And those are businesses that you can put on a hit list and then you can go after them. So you're not wasting a lot of time. You know they have a marketing budget. Just an FYI. Okay, the third, third rocket is to be a good actor. Um, I said this in one of my early interviews and it's, 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 it's been thrown around the internet since. Uh, when you're small, act big. And when you're big, act small. And what I mean by that is when we all get started, everybody who's starting a business, we're basically starting out of some small office somewhere, some dorm somewhere, our bedroom, you know, we're borrowing an office from somebody else, we have a laptop in Oasis, and we're trying to run our business. I mean, you're starting small, but from a perception perspective, it's really important to quote unquote, look big. And that's how I was able to close my first clients, is to look bigger than I really was as a company. Right? I mean, my name wasn't, you know, uh, Roshkan Media or anything like that. It was Social Rank Media, and I had a really badass website. Right? I spent the entire weekend, you know, sort of building out this website, making it look really good. I went to themeforest.com. You guys don't know this one. Themeforest.com. They've got beautiful themes up there. Bought one, customized it, put it online, threw up a quick logo, and all of a sudden I had a fancy website. So I met people and I was sending people to the website, they'd see this beautiful website and think, wow, this, this dude's credible, even though I really didn't, didn't have any clients at the time. All right, so what's the most important thing when you're, trying to, uh, when you're trying to act big? Get your website in order and get your business card in order. Because those are the main points of contact, all right? And when you're big, act small. Think about it, all the big corporations want to seem like they're the guy next door. Think about Geico, right? You know, 15 minutes or more can save you what? 50 minutes or more in car insurance, right? And there's a local office right next door. They try to seem like, hey, we're one of you guys. They want to seem small. They want to seem like seem like town folks. So know when to flip the model when your business gets to that level. Um, a really cool uh, resource that you can use is prweb.com. prweb.com is, is really for press releases. If you want to get press releases out there, you want to get published on New York Times, you want to get out there on Yahoo Finance, you want to get out there on Bloomberg, and you want to be able to say, hey, you're on CNN and all these really cool things, check out prweb.com. They give you lots of material on how to frame your press release, and then they syndicate it for you. So it's very hard as an individual to go and send the press release out to all the individual journalists, at all these uh, uh, media outlets. But you pay them, and they get it out to everybody. And whether or not they run with the story or not, you know, that's, that's up to the, to the media house. Um, but at least they put it out there for you. And it works. PRweb.com. Uh, one really cool thing you can do is to sort of uh, borrow credibility is to sort of interview or talk to somebody who's a leader in your industry, whatever the business is. I know in the information marketing industry, there are a couple of people that are really at the top uh, of, of the food chain, if you will. Uh, people like uh, uh, Frank Kern, uh, people like Tom Beal, um, people like, uh, uh, who, who's our client? What was our client that we did, Bestseller Blueprint? Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield, you know, these, these guys are really at the top of, of the food chain as it relates to that industry. So what I started to do was to score an interview with them. Just reach out to them and say, hey, can I interview you guys? This is gonna be published on my website, you know, that no one was really on anyway. But what I did, that gained, I, I, I gained access um, to them, um, into their mind, 
And without having to pay them, I was able to ask them questions, a few questions, and then I was able to put out on social media and in the newspapers, hey, you know, Rosh Khan interviewed Jack Canfield. And all of a sudden, my name's in the same headline with Jack Canfield, which is really cool. All right? All right, so does anybody remember that, um, that movie, Castaway? Who was, who was the lead, the lead uh, actor in Castaway? It was like the only actor in Castaway. Yeah. It was Tom Hanks, right? It was Tom Hanks, and his name was Chuck. So when you walk out of here, I want you to, to, to channel your inner Chuck. What did Chuck do in order to get off of the island? He was, he was on an island for, guy, for, for, for those too young to know about Castaway. He was, he was stranded on an island and he was able to get off eventually. How was he able to do that? What's that? I didn't hear it. You're too old, wow. So we've got that in the spectrum as well. All right, so what he had to do, he had to get resourceful. And that's the key here. I've also been quoted with this, it's not about your resources, it's about being resourceful, right? It really doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter, you know, how much money you have in your wallet, you know, what you've got at home. If you've got basic resources, you've got basic resources, but you can be resourceful in knowing how to tap into your network. That makes all the difference. So, like, I get really tired of people who make excuses and say, you know, I, I don't have the resources, man. I, I don't have the capital. I don't. The truth is, the information on how to get all those things are out there. You're just not trying hard enough. You're not being resourceful enough, and that's the cold hard truth, right? Everyone here, I am, I'm seeing them on all the tables. Everyone here has an encyclopedia. They have more than an encyclopedia. They have access to the globe in their pocket. Well, in this case, on the tables. Your phones. If you have access to Google and you have a phone, you have no excuse for trying to make business work because it's all out there. It's all out there. And the key here is to take imperfect action. And I, and I want you guys to remember that. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction every single day. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction every single day. And what I mean by that is it doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to get out there and do it, whatever it is. You know, we think we don't procrastinate, but this, this desire for perfection is actually a, a mechanism of procrastination, if you want to be honest with yourself. But any day, imperfect action will trump perfect inaction, because we're all very perfect at doing nothing. For me, one example I can give you a personal, you'll see, you'll see I have these hashtags, PS. That's really just to remind me what story to tell you guys. PS, personal story, hashtag. Um, so, uh, when I was a broke uh, medical student, um, I needed to make money. And before I, I started up this social media thing and I got cheaper peepers, I used to, uh, I, I was a flower delivery boy. So I used to work with 1-800-Flowers on the weekends to make, some, to make some side cash. At that time, I had no money, I had no car. So, uh, what did I do? Um, I found out how many deliveries I had to make on a daily basis. They paid between six and twelve dollars a delivery, uh, depending on, on, on where you were going. I had to find out how many deliveries I had to make um, in order to rent a car and to pay for gas. And at the end of the day, I was profiting three hundred to four hundred dollars, which isn't bad. Took a lot of work, but what? I didn't have the resources. I got resourceful about it. That's the point. All right, and this is, this is one, if you guys want to take a snapshot of this, or you guys want to write this down, um, it's, it's a pretty good one and, and should um, help to catalyze you guys into motion. Uh, the winners are busy taking imperfect action while the losers are still creating the perfect plan. How many of us are still sitting on an idea creating the perfect plan while others are out there doing what they need to do even though it's not perfect? All right, all right, the next rocket we're gonna talk about. Be quick to fail. Be very, very quick to fail. The secret to success 
is in knowing that failure is never the final destination. Again, a quote of mine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the secret to success is in knowing that failure is never the final destination. Lots of times we're going to hit bumps in the road, we're going to hit obstacles, that's normal. Take the failure, fail often, learn from the failure, revise your strategy, and keep moving forward. I learned this when I first got started with my business. Um, I was failing because I was lowballing my price points. And then I wasn't making the money I needed to make in order to just cover expenses. So then I got really brave, and every time somebody asked me, you know, how much would this thing be, it was $500. And I'd like gauge their response. And they're like, yeah, okay, cool. And I was like, oh, they'll pay $500 for this, great. Um, next person asked, what's the price for this thing? Uh, $1,000. And they're like, okay, no problem. I'm like, whoa, I'm onto something. I'll, I'll just keep increasing the price. Third client I spoke to, you know, how much is this going to cost? $2,000. You know, I've got a website. <laughs> and they're like, great, let's do it. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. So the next client comes around, and I get really brave. You know, I'm like, it's going to cost $10,000. Guys, I can't get out of my room. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I went a little too far on that one. Right? But the point is, you won't know unless you try. Right? You've got to try different things, and you've got to be open to failure. You've got to sort of, you know, we... we we go through all these years of, of school, you know, and, and we get allergic to that F, you know, on our paper. And we're told never to fail, it's bad to fail. And the truth is when it comes to business, you want to fail as often as possible because that's the quickest way to learn. That's the quickest way to learn, revise your strategy, and then come again. All right, now, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, you know, uh, but screw multitasking. And I really mean that. Screw multitasking. I multitask way too much. We all multitask way too much. It's holding you back. Multitasking is holding you back like you would not believe. There are actually scientific, um, there's actually scientific documentation on multitasking lowering your IQ. And Lance, you might, you might know about this. No, no, not lowering your IQ. <laughs> Brain street and all. Yeah. Multitasking lowers your IQ. And what you need to do is to monotask instead. Don't multitask, monotask. Do one thing at a time, do it 100%. Don't do it at 50% while you're checking on your phone for 20% and you're looking for Facebook notifications to the other 20% and then hoping somebody calls you for the next 10. Focus 100% of energy, be incredibly efficient with what you're doing on one task. And I, I like to use 20 minute sprints um, sometimes it, it doesn't last 20 minutes, it goes to 30. But if you set a goal to say, listen, I'm gonna finish this document, or finish this report, or get done with my administrative tasks by this time, that's going to help. And by the way, my phone's on silent, or if I remember it, I put it on silent, and, and tuck it away, okay? The next rocket, learn to schmooze and bulldoze. All right, are we familiar with the term schmooze? You want to schmooze somebody, so you want to like, you know, get up under them and be friends with them, and, you know, swar, as you call it, right? We want to schmooze, but we also want to bulldoze, and let me explain what I mean by that. Um, you want to master the art of the approach, and I, I mentioned that here, but we're going to go into more detail very briefly on another slide. But master the art of the approach, whether it's a physical approach. Uh, whether it's a digital approach, whether you're reaching out to people via email, um, you're reaching out to people uh, via social media, you're retweeting somebody, master the art of the approach. And there are gazillions of, of articles on how to do this. So make Google your friend. Um, network smartly, the magic is in the follow-up. Uh, how many times do we go to events, do we collect business cards, do we meet people and think, hey, I want to talk to that person again, or hey, that was an interesting person, or you know, hey, I need, I need that service that guy was, was pitching me, or I think I can get him to buy my product or my service, but what do we lack? We lack, we lack the follow-up, okay? So the magic is in the follow-up. Don't forget the follow-up. You just wasted all your time and energy you know, trying to create a relationship that you never really created. And create a hit list, I mentioned this earlier. Uh, whether you're, you're going after businesses or you're trying to connect with certain types of people, um, 
or certain people in different industries, create a hit list. Are you trying to connect with managers of banks? Mm -hmm. um, are you trying to connect with people in government? Are you trying to connect with other uh, entrepreneurs? Create a hit list and work through that list. It's better to know, hey, I saw this guy in the newspaper. He sounds pretty cool. I want to connect with him. And just drum up a relationship. Just message him. Just say, hey, or her. And then bulldoze through that list. Don't create the list and then tuck it away somewhere, but actually bulldoze through that list and meet as many people as you can. You know, it's often said it's more about your network than it is your net worth. You guys might know that one. And um, for me, I'll just briefly share um, uh, the sort of the email layout, the message layout that I use. If I meet somebody, um, or if I haven't met them, um, I'll be, uh, I'll just say, you know, really quickly, hey, it was great to meet you. If I didn't meet you, hey, I saw you in this magazine, or I saw you give a webinar, or I saw you on TV, or I saw you in the newspaper. Right, so the, you, you don't seem like, like a creepy stalker kind of person, right? Um, you explain where you've made the point of contact first, then you tell them what you like about them or what you like about what they did or what they offered. But don't just say, hey, I like X, Y, and Z. Say, I like X, Y, and Z. My thoughts on that are X, Y, and Z. So they now know that you're an insightful, you're a thoughtful person, right? You're putting some thought into getting to know the material. You're not just going for the ask. You know, hey Lance, can I use you know GCCI's venue for my event? You imagine that's the first point of contact somebody made with Lance. That would not be cool. All right, so, and after you do that, you drop the relationship, uh, you look for a response, you offer help or feedback if you can, and then you do the ask later on. It's all about giving first uh, before asking. Um, for me, uh, personally, personal story, um, the way I was able to connect with the, the number one internet marketer in the world, Chris Farrell, is because I cyber stalked the hell out of that guy. Um, all the webinars he did, I was on them. At the end of every webinar, there would be a Q&A section. I would make sure I stayed on there so he would see my name. Um, when he was make, making posts on Facebook, I would ensure that I liked his posts. If he was putting out a podcast, I would listen to the podcast and then shoot some feedback by email or, or post it to his fan base. So he kept seeing this name. You know, rosh, 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 all over the place, and then, until he was like, who is this guy? Or, who is this guy? And he clicks on my profile, sees, oh, he launched social rank, whatever the hell that is, you know? But I knew at that point that he knew me, and then when he was in the area, I reached out to him and said, hey, can we, can we uh, you know, meet for a cup of coffee? Because he's known for doing that. He likes to meet people over coffee. And he said, yeah. I wasn't a stranger at that point. He knew the name. And I met with him. Uh, we were able to build a relationship, and he was my first really big client. And then he introduced me to all the people in his inner circle, and I was able to close all of them and get them as clients as well. All because I cyber stalked him. So take note, so I cyber stalked people. Um, I did the same thing with, uh, with, with uh, the owner of Craigslist, which was, which was pretty cool. I actually didn't expect to get a response from him. Uh, he had shared something on Facebook. I really liked what he shared. I sent him a personal message. And he replied right back to me. And we were having a full-blown conversation with the owner of, of Craigslist and me hearing it out, you know, through Facebook, which is pretty cool. So it just goes to show you social media sort of it sort of breaks down the barriers. Just go ahead and use it. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. And then um, an example of, of giving before asking. Uh, I was mentioned uh, as being an amazing case study um, on the rise to the top, which is a, a popular business podcast. And the way I was able to do that is really interesting. Remember, my thing was social media. So I was looking at the show, and I was looking at the fan page, and I realized they were doing a lot of stuff wrong. They could have optimized it in a really big way. So what I do, I reached out, I said I liked this stuff, um, I told him what I liked about it, and then I gave him some recommendations on how he could fix what he has on his Facebook fan page and how he can optimize for even better performance, better reach, more sales. And I offered to do it for free. I offered to do it for free. And he replied back saying, wow, that's really interesting. Cool, yeah, let's, let's do it. I feel really bad about making you do it for free, but let's do it. And I did it for him. He got massive results from it. He replied back to me and says, you know, how can I repay you? Do you have like a cool story or something that I could put you know, on my podcast and I was like, whoa, I was not even thinking that he actually put me on the podcast. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I was making a certain, a certain amount of money one month, and you know, in less than 12 months, I was making you know, a, a lot more, and you might want to cover that, it might be relevant to your audience. This is a business crowd. And he's like, wow, that's a great story. And we had the podcast, uh, we threw it up online, and we did a Skype thing with Guyana, it was terrible. 
um, with, the, with, the, with the video. So it became mainly, mainly uh, uh, an audio uh, interview. But it was one of the most watched podcasts on his website because of how down and dirty we got with nitty gritty details talking about how I was making less than $100 a month and 12 months later I was doing $20,000 a month. How is that possible? People wanted to know. But I gave first. All right, so here's an important one. And, and I feel like we need to do some of this in the room. Um, get loose, all right, get loose. A lot of us are just too stiff and impersonal. And in our communications with our employees, in our communications with our prospects, in communication with other business people, we're very stiff and impersonal. And I try to stay away from that. I try to add as much personality as I can within my communications, especially if it's digital or written in some way. Because you lose a lot of enthusiasm, you lose a lot of who you are when you write it down on paper. So I'll actually break protocol many times, and instead of saying, hey, you know, you know insert name, um, I'll put hey with three Y's. Like, hey, name. Even though, even though it's a business email, you'd be surprised at how far that goes to prospects or how far that goes to employees. So the more down to earth you can be, the better. Um, ask about family, events, hobbies. If you're dealing with people, you know as a good salesman, it's not just about asking about the business. It's about, well, hey, what else is going on in your life? How, how are the kids, you know? Well, what are you doing this weekend? Are we hanging out with gravity? Maybe you don't want to do that one. But, you know, reach out to them on a personal level uh, and set aside time for fun things. I was actually able to close a really big client via email, never spoke to him, never spoke to him, but knew because of his Facebook post that his kid had a baseball game. And in the email I sent to him, pitching you know, uh, the product we have to offer, I added in on the end, P.S., how was your son's baseball game? He replied back, sent about three paragraphs about the baseball game, and then one line about the business at the end of it saying, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead, let's move forward. All right, so, so connect with people on a human level, on a personal level. Okay, so who knows about the Zulu? You guys have heard about the Zulu, right? The tribe, Zulu, there was a movie about it, a really old movie, okay, with Michael Caine. I only know about that because of my dad. Um, but I want you to learn to deploy the Zulu bullhorn. In, if you study sort of uh, like the art of war and you look at, at military strategy, you can apply a lot of what you read and learn there to business, especially as it relates to the Zulu and how they're able to win wars or how they were able to win wars. If you think about the shape of a bullhorn, what does it look like? You've got the base. Right, and we've got the horns on the side, right? So what the Zulus do, they'll send a small contingent first to engage the enemy. They'll have reserves on the back, but they'll also fan out and create two flanks on the side that will surround the enemy so they have nowhere to run. It's called a bullhorn approach, and you can do that with business, you can do that with marketing. Don't count on a one-trick pony. I know many of us, we like to get really comfortable with, with posting a certain ad in the classifieds or posting a certain ad in the newspaper and maybe only one newspaper. But there are other avenues of meeting people as well, of connecting with people. And think about how you can do a, a cross-channel and multi-channel strategy. Think about how you can use Facebook and social media and how you can use that with billboards and newspapers and magazines and word of mouth, and handing out flyers, and talking to people when they come up, when they come into your store. Think about how you can create a bullhorn strategy as it relates to marketing. So you surround your target demographic, and you conquer that target demographic. And of course, I'm a big fan of, of social media. Learn to use digital. Too many people are not using Facebook. I preach about this all the time. I won't preach too much here today about Facebook. But get familiar with Facebook ads, it is the number one way to get your business out there. It is the cheapest way to get your business out there. There are 120,000 uh, Guyanese on Facebook at any given time. We all probably have our Facebook apps open on our phone.